previously on Complete Games. And this time we're going to be taking on our main base build. We are using vanilla building mechanics to do all of this stuff. You know, having these triangles come out just gives a different type of edge. I've just given it a lick of paint. We've used forest green on the roof and that's the only thing I've painted at the moment. Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and we continue with my challenge to complete the center map and defeat its guardians. And I've been busy in the background. First off, let me bring you up to speed on the Pteranodons. We've got Spidey Paul version 3 here. Managed to combine all of the good stats and we've got a melee mutation on Spidey Paul version 3. But I am continuing with the Pteranodon project just round the back here. And I'll probably stack a few more mutations before we pack this set away. And I've managed to get a few veggies down because, well, we've gotten them started, but I think I'm gonna build a greenhouse onto the side of the building just here. Of course, we've managed to tame ourselves an amber pig. Always need one of them around your base. And I'm yet to stick any paint up on this building. I'm still not decided what color I'm gonna paint. Maybe we'll go with, I don't know, a yellow. Uh, I've also put some foundations down outside here. I'm happy with how that's turned out. It looks pretty smooth. And I've got some air conditioners just down in this corner here. Now, I often get a question saying that their air conditioners are just not working to hatch out eggs. So don't forget, you can stack air conditioners on top of each other and that will increase the intensity of how well they work. Especially with things like rock drakes, I find you need several just to be able to hatch one of them eggs. Now, I haven't done much with the inside of this building. As I've said, I'm probably going to put some vaults going along this wall to cover up that rock. And I'm yet to work on the inside of the building, but I'm pretty happy with how the surface is looking on the outside here. Now, when it comes to the Argents, I really have been struggling to combine all of the good stats. I've gone through numerous birds. More than this, I've had to chuck a few in the volcano to get rid of them. but. It's just not behaving itself and we're not getting the stats across, but that's just arc sometimes. Oh, got some rain. I'm used to that being in the UK and it does rain on this map quite a lot. So now let's head on out. Today I wanted to grab a Quetzal because I've been hunting around for a Baryonyx. There's no shortage of Baryonyx on this map and of course since the update an Argent can't pick up a berry, which is fair enough, they are quite a large creature and I think any good tame for an early tribe or an early player is the Quetzal. So when it comes to Fjordor and Genesis 2, you just got to use the net gun. The net gun can just be shot at most things, can't it? It can even be shot at a Uteranus. It's just, yeah, I'll have that. No problem. Knock it out. And I'm kind of disappointed that they added it to Fjordor, if I'm honest, because it just makes taming and trapping things yeah, you know, not really that difficult to do. But on the center map, we don't have access to the net gun. So we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. And if we've got a Quetzal, we'll be able to pick up the Baryonyx. But I've already killed, I don't know, at least a dozen Baryonyx. And I'm yet to find a good level. But being that I spotted this Quetzal just out towards this Blue Island, if it's still here, I figured we'd begin this episode and I'll show you how to solo tame a Quetz because they can be a little bit awkward. Now, if we had an Equus, as I've shown in some of my guides as well, the lasso can be used to drag a Quetzal and that can be quite useful because you can never control where they're going to land using this method. But like I say, if you're on a Fjordor map, then, well, it's just a case of getting yourself a Desmondus, shooting it with a net, and it's really not even a challenge. You can even just shoot the net at a Uteranus. It's just basically, oh, I'll have that. Oh, there we go. So we've got our Quetz up here. It's not a very high level one, but it will do the job. What was it? Level 60. So, yeah. Now, this can be a little bit awkward to do by yourself, but nonetheless still fun and I've still got my same method that we've always used I'll just land down here 
Okay, so we're just going to grapple onto our bird. I've got a few parachutes as well, but we probably won't use them. And I think it's always better to do this if you've got your long neck and your trank darts, because trying to tame a quetz with arrows can quite often go wrong. So we'll just grapple onto our bird. And come on, whistle. I do get comments saying I need to learn my whistles, but trust me, I've been playing this game for about eight years now, and something has changed when it comes to the whistles. They're just, yeah, look at that. I mean, you can see it's supposed to be flying in the sky, but it's not. But we'll just whistle attack, target, and then whistle it off, and oh, there we go. No, don't land, don't land. It does work, trust me. <laughs> just whistle, whistle attack, and then just whistle it off when you get close. But something has definitely changed when it comes to the whistles. I noticed that back when we was doing the Scorched Earth playthrough, but I don't know. It's just, you know, not working how it used to work. Okay. So yeah, grappled on to your Argent. It's just a case of whistling and following. And we just whistle attack that target and then when you get close try and whistle the bird away because we don't want to actually kill it just whistle you off no 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 not that one yeah, that was my fault that time but now what we want to do is encourage this to get away from the water last thing we want is it dying over the top of the water here and yeah, that's all there is to it basically. Just follow it around, keep whistling attack, and then stop. And we'll get there in the end. Okay, a couple more shots should do it. So it just takes a little bit of patience. And last thing you want to do is knock it out over the ocean. We're over the land now, and hopefully, one more we should have it. Just drop it over the top of these trees here. Here we go. Okay. And just whistle. Oh, not attack, but get back down to the ground. And that's how you solo tame a Quetzal. Yeah, landed on this rock. This is good. So it's taken a little while to tame out. Always good idea to have plenty of narcotic with you. And it would probably be a good idea if I put some spiked walls down as well, because we don't want to get in attacked. It's on the rock, so it should be okay. No, 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 don't you... Oh, it's hit it, hasn't it? Yeah. Damn. Well, that's my own fault. Um, do as I say, and not as I do, and stick some spiked walls down when you're taming the Quetzals, like I say. And yeah, we've lost some taming effectiveness there, but... Hey, that's just how it goes. As long as we've got a basic quetz to get us started, it's too close to waking up, so we could let it starve out and wake up and build something over it, but yes, yeah, it's, it's not like it's a max level or anything. It will do. It will do. Tamed out at level 85, and most quets, even low-level ones, have a reasonable weight stat, so points-wise, yeah, look, 13 points. So, it'll be fine. Once you've got one Quetzal, getting more is not a problem. And I'm only going to be using this Quetz really to just gather dinosaurs with. I don't really think I'm going to be using it for carrying stuff. I mean, I'm quite close to resources. There's re resources all over the center map. So, really, I only wanted it to be able to pick up baryonyx and things that we can't pick up with our Argent. So, let's head on back to our base. Okay, just take advantage of this. So, it's pretty weak and I'll just jump on the Quetz. And we'll finish off this Alpha Raptor down here. And of course, We'll end up getting a few levels on this Quetz, and I'm sure killing this Raptor is going to give us plenty of left levels, and the Quetz will be more than useful enough. If we could just 
boosted it, its health stat a little bit. Let's see how many levels we get for a level 55 alpha. And just gather all of this meat and stuff. Get plenty of meat back from an alpha. So there we go, 15 levels. I'm going to stack a load in health because they do take a little bit of damage when you pick up creatures. So I'd like its health to be a little bit higher just so it can withstand taking some punishment, bringing something back to base. And we get, well, I may as well stick them gloves on for now. We've got a level as well. Um, we'll go for Fortitude. It's level 77, getting closer to that industrial forge and the chemistry bench, so perhaps next time I can finish off our base. Say, so we need to get to level 80 before we can do anything with that. But alphas are always a good way to get a little bit of extra. Okay, uh, uh, we've got some mutations here, so... Um, you see, I still haven't managed to combine our stats, um, but the blue one has, yeah, blue here has got a stamina mutation and it's got all of the stats as well. So, um, well, I'll keep both of the colours back because we can always breed them in later, but the bluebird will definitely do us to begin with. It's got all of the stats that we needed. These two are no good. I say, I've just been struggling and to combine all of the stats. And even though we've got a mutation there, really, we just want to get our base pair together before we even start taking the mutations on. But being that that's got all of the stats and a mutation, I'm just going to, I'm going to use it. We could throw it into the breeding line as well, but... Uh, we'll keep them, we'll keep them. It's a female as well. Putting a stat back on to, with the female is always a, an extra step that you have to go through. But yeah, we'll just use that one, let them both grow up. And we can always use the yellow bird if we want to use it for its color later on. And yeah, just the Argents are not behaving themselves. Just trying to get the male together at the minute. So I finally managed to combine all of the stats on these Argents. Finally managed to get the male with all of the stats that we want. And I'm going to keep this blue one. We'll use this as Dead Man version 2. It's just got that extra stamina mutation and that will be fine to get us started because we are using that poor Argentavis as Dead Man. I even know it rescued us on the center last time around. This one's got all of the stats that we want. And we finally managed to get the male here. So that's what we're looking at. A reasonable set of stats on our combined base pair. So when that grows up, we can start stacking mutations. So I'm going to head on out, try and find ourselves a carnivore. Okay. Well, that raptor's going to get eaten if I don't take it. It's got the potential for a good melee stat. It's got like... Oh, I'm going to rescue it before this, well, before this pair of Rexes eat it. It's got 28 wild points in melee damage, so it's got every chance of having a good melee stat. I don't really like doing raptors for cave dinos, but they were more than enough on the aberration map, so they'll be good enough for this one. Let's just tame this up. Oh. It's managed to find its way up the hill. There we go. No! Dead man! Stop it! I swear, I'm pressing, I'm pressing passive. Come on, come on, come on, stop it. I swear, it's not me! It's, it's my keyboard or something's broken, but something's happened to Ark. Oh dear. But there you go, look, 28 points in melee damage on this one. So potential for being a good melee damage dino. Just try and get it knocked out. Just come on. I'll get it. Oh, there you go. It's just going to put its head in the wall. That's fine. You just stay there. And there we go. Knocked 
knocked it out finally. It was only going to die to them T-Rex, so... Ah, oh, um, egg thieves. There's loads of them on this map. Loads of egg thieves. Okay. I'll just go and get some prime meat off that Bronto up there. Oh, get rid of these Dillos as well. Don't want them hitting our Raptor. I'll just quickly go and grab some prime meat because I haven't got any on me. That Bronto will do fine. Okay, it's finally waking up. So, we got 28 wild points in melee damage. And if we just turn around and come back, what did it actually tame out with? 40. So, there you go. So, you can generally gauge when you're looking at a dino and looking at the wild points using the spyglass, whether it's going to be worthwhile taming. It's not an exact science, but uh, 40 points is a good starting point for any creature that you're trying to combine stats on. So I won't grumble at that. I'm pleased we rescued that one from the T-Rex. Let's go and see what else we can find. So what's in this drop here? Um, oh, a Phylocolio saddle. So, ah, oh, Ark, you would, wouldn't you? You're just doing it to tease me because my favorite creature is the Phylocolio and I'd love to go and grab one and do all of the caves on a Philo. Problem is, we need cooked mutton, and I haven't come across any Ovis, so Philo's preferred food is cooked mutton, and of course it takes the exceptional kibble. So it's always a difficult one to tame early on. But with that being said, we have got a saddle. I mean, I guess we could go across to the Redwoods and see if we could find something. I mean, with the saddle, that would make a reasonable cave-in dino. It's just, yeah, we really, at the very least, need some cooked mutton to be able to tame one. Uh, let's head on over there anyway. Just to the north. Not had any luck with the Phylocolios, but I am trying to get this bear in a trap. And... Oh, missed. That is the thing with the quets. It's difficult to see when you're over the trap. And come on. Oh, I whistled passive. What are you doing hitting the... Oh. Gonna have to wait a while for the health to come back on this bear now because it has been hit a few times. If we can actually get it in the trap. So, yeah, there we go. So reason I'm taming up a bear is if we need to tame ourselves a bee, get some honey, and the bears are immune to the bee stings, so they're the perfect tame to use to be able to get a wild bee. And I swear, it was set to passive. It says passive on there. Why you're attacking the bear, I don't know. We're just going to have to take this one slowly because it's halfway down on its health. But yeah, bears, definitely the way to go if you want to get a wild bee tame. And, well, we're going to need honey if we're going to make exceptional kibble. So I don't want to kill it. I'm just having to wait around. There we go. It's out, finally. And we'll put some prime meat down on it. This is why we really need to get that bee tamed up, because we, we need to make kibble. Now, of course... We have the Desmondus, of course, that also makes the Elixir, so it pretty much is bypasses the fact that you need to make kibble as well. It's just, it really has been a massive game changer. The introduction of the Shadow Main and the Desmondus has completely changed the way that you play. It's just, and that with the net gun as well. I don't know, I mean... I think they're really, really too overpowered, personally. But, of course, on this map, we've got to do it the old-fashioned way. And I'll be honest, I've really been enjoying the centre. It's reminded me why I really enjoy this game. So, I've sent up plenty of fires because there's loads of Truodons and the night time's coming in. So, we'll put plenty of light down. They don't like the fire. And if one comes over here, we can just whack it with the fire. It's another trick for the Truodons at night time, and there's no shortage of them in the Redwoods. So we'll just hang around for this bear. Uh, 
Oh, max level tech raptor, but I mean, look at it. <laughs> it benefits from an extra 30 levels. Any tech creature goes up to 180. Max level on this map is uh, 150. So an extra 30 levels, but wouldn't you know, pretty much everything is just evenly spread with its highest wild point being 27. But that being said, it could be a good starting point. I mean, we've already got the organic raptor. Do we want to go tech raptors? Mm, I mean, I'm going to continue looking, see what else we can find. I am tempted, but yeah, typical arc. Just spreading out the points evenly. Okay, I'm tempted to grab this wolf here. I'll just get rid of this 140. And we'll get its mate to eat it. That way we can give it all of its health back. <clears throat> if we can just fly over the top of this wolf. There we go. Get all of its health back. So... Not really having much luck with the raptors, but a wolf wouldn't be a bad cave mount. And it's got like 28 wild points in weight, and I do like having high weight on the wolves to begin with. Definitely more useful on the cannon maps because they're good for sniffing out notes and stuff, but I don't mind a good wolf pack. I'd be happy to tackle a load of the caves on a strong wolf pack, so... We'll take it back to base and get this one tamed up. Just haven't had any luck finding another raptor that would be worth taming. Okay, what did we end up with point-wise on this dire wolf? Mm, kind of so-so. 36 on the stamina, 34 on the weight. So, I mean, it's a start if we decide to go and get ourselves a wolf pack. So we've got a male raptor, a female wolf. I guess we could go back and grab that tech raptor as well. Gives gives us another option. Um, we just haven't managed to find a pair yet. And that's just sometimes the way it goes on arc, you know. Doesn't always fall into suit. I'm probably going to cut this out, but I did go back and grab that tech raptor. And... We'll see what we get with this one. Like I say, it's got an even spread of stats, so it should come out with something. It's a beginning. It's a female one, so we'll see what we get with this. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, 39, 45 in stamina, 39 in health. It's not bad. It's not bad. Any other raptor we could stick with that and keep the keep the stats. It'd be a start. So we could go organic raptors, tech raptors, or wolves at this rate. That's just sometimes the way art goes. We'll see what we can find and head back out to the volcano. So I'm back, and I know it's been over a week since I've managed to get an upload on the center map, but I have been really busy doing stuff around the base. Well, of course. Dead Man version 2 has proved to be more than adequate as an Argentavis, but in spite of that, now he's got some levels, I'm still continuing to stack mutations on our Argents just over here. So I've got a small breeding section over here with five females. We've managed to get one health mutation and two melee mutations on the male back here. And I'll just switch them on now so you can see the eggs just drop out off of this platform. And it's not as if we're really going to be breeding these to take on a boss. And in all honesty, Dead Man version 2 is more than enough on this map. But I do like stacking mutations on the Argent. So I've just got this section at the back here. And yeah, it's, it's no trouble now just to stick them on when we need. I've given our building a lick of paint. I decided to go with yellow. We've put some green and black doors on. It's starting to come together. I've also widened the entrance and put the Alpha T-Rex trophy out the front. So I think it looks a lot better. I think the entrance was a little bit small around the back here. Of course, I haven't managed to do anything more with our Pteranodons. And I think next time I'm going to build 
a greenhouse onto the side of this and of course now we've got that bear I need to get some honey as well we'll get the giant bee tamed up so we can start producing kibble I did make this taming pen makes it a lot easier for the Quetzal to drop stuff in but let me bring you over to our Raptor section now again this has taken a few days to be able to get all of the stats transferred across but this is what we're looking at with one melee mutation we've got these uh, raptors I mean they're all 40 plus points there apart from the weight so cave dino wise we're going tech raptors this time round was the best I could find and I've just got this little breeding section set up so we don't need to put any air conditioning down and even if I did put air conditioning down they'd hatch without air conditioners and it just makes it awkward to go and get all of the eggs so I just go around the back and collect them all we put the male above them and then I've got I think it's like nine females underneath and the more females you have the more chance you have a role in that mutation so now that they're all set and ready we should be able to stack a few mutations on to them raptors and I think they'll be good cave dinos so there we go so I just drop the eggs off just down here I've only done five female argents and like I say that man's actually proven to be more than adequate on this map anyway and it's just it's probably overkill I think the longer I play Ark the more overkill I get when it comes to breeding but let's just turn this off it's just something that I can do I can come in switch them on just have a little bit of a roll by the round base and slowly but surely once you've organized your tames this way it becomes easy to stack the mutations and that's just how we do it but I'm happy with how the base looks just adding that color to the outside is really added to it I think and like I say we've got our tech raptors in the end so I'll still have a hunt around for some baryonyx and they proved to be more than use on the aberration map so we'll give them a try on this map they're certainly going to be pretty strong there we go let's just grab all of these eggs as well see what we end up with and you can remove the ceiling and the male continues to hang there I could of course double this and have, I don't know, a good 18 females on the go, put two two rows of them down, but this should do. I, I don't really need to go overkill on it, but I don't know. I think the more that I play this game, the more years that I played it, the more I end up overkilling with the, um, <laughs> the stacking of mutations, and it's just, you know, I don't know. I find it fun. Maybe some people call it prestige breeding, because you go overboard but that eh, well you know I mean it's better to have the power and not need it than to need it and not have it so we're looking at two five four so two five two so no not this time so we're always looking for two levels higher than on the male to see if we got a mutation I haven't had any interesting colours come out, but these are all for the bin. And just come over this way. Unfortunately, I'm still using the primitive shotgun to do this with. And it does cost a little bit of ammunition, but if I can find a better shotgun, then I should be able to do it in one shot. I always feel guilty when I'm doing this because it's like, you know... They know it's coming, don't they? You know, it's like some of them take more than one shot. And I mean, particularly with these last two here, look, they're just having to wait for me to reload. They know it's coming as well. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, but you just didn't make the cut. There we go. <laughs> now, one of the advantages of actually breeding tech dinos is they actually give us oil and scrap metal uh, components and dust back so it is actually pretty good breeding with tech
tech creatures. I always do like to have tech creatures on the go. And if you've got the chainsaw, and if you're on scorched earth, then you really will benefit from the amount of stuff you get back. But yeah, it might seem cruel, but it's just part of how you stack mutations on Ark. We can't keep all of the creatures. So I don't know why that one's not grown. Anyway, let's see if we get a mutation on these raptors. And I think when we do next week's episode or next episode, uh, I'll probably get a greenhouse on the go. And of course, I forgot about that. Managed to tame an otter. Probably won't put that in the video. I think we'll miss that cut. It was nothing special. And if you're struggling to tame an otter, well, just check out my guide on that. I always use the Argent, and I think by now that's pretty much a common trick. But otter, by far the most useful shoulder mount, especially on this map. Helps with the insulation, and we can also carry extra artifacts with it. So. Even, it was a low level one, I think it was like level 30 or something, but even a low level one like this, we just got 40 weight on it, so it could carry like 4 artifacts already, and with the rest of the points you just stack melee damage, and melee damage increases his hypo and hyper insulation. So I can already see there, we've got a 289, and it's got, what's it got, oh, it's a food mutation, so no good. But, have we got anything else? Like I say, it's not always that they have a colour change. So I'm looking for anything that's a 289. Anything that's two levels higher than the male that we've got. It doesn't appear we've got anything here. But doing it this way, it gives us an extra nine chances. So that's why we breed in this way. And I'm sure most of you... you know all of this stuff already but the advantage of having a tech creature is all of the resources that you end up getting back and now that that breeding section is just all set to go all I've got to do is run over there we can turn the Argents on turn the Raptors on and it won't take long before we've got a really good set of caving creatures just try and get to these ones at the back and then I can hit them all at once. Get you and can reach this last one here. No, probably not. Let me crouch down and get to you. There we go. So these ones are all for the bin. Didn't make the cut. We do have that food mutation, but I'm not really interested in keeping the color on it. It's just landed on that forest green. It's nothing special. And I don't think them colours really go with what we're doing anyway. Not that I'm after breeding dinos for colours here, but... Let's just get rid of these. I'm sorry, but it has to be done. Let's come around this side as well. I mean, at least it gives us scrap metal back, and scrap metal is much better than ordinary metal just like one scrap per one metal ingot as opposed to two metal per one ingot so scrap is always good and yeah we get plenty of oil and components back so oh got a level there as well that's the other thing with breeding as well makes it much easier to stack levels and we're at level 85 now so that means I'm going to be able to put that industrial forge down we're at a point where we can get the chemistry bench down I think I might shove that actually outside of the base. I might shove that just here because I kind of like it all being open. I haven't decided yet. We might bring the electrics down here and put a little bit of a workshop area on the outside rather than on the inside of the building. But no mutations this time, but I will keep rolling in the background and hopefully... I won't have a gap of a week or more before we continue with our challenge. But that's just the way it goes. Sometimes getting all of these breeders together does take some time. But I hope you enjoyed that one. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games. And I'll see you.